How concerned should the Bucks be about the health of their offensive line heading into their matchup with the Rams this weekend? Seriously concerned. Look, Tristan Wurst was an all-pro. Ryan Jensen, their starting center. Tristan Wurst, right tackle. Ryan Jensen, their starting center, is someone that uh, Tom Brady says is, you know, as good as he's played with and someone who he really does have a lot of confidence in and really feels as though he sets the tone as far as toughness on the offensive line. Now, if the Buccaneers are behind in that game at any point in time and the Rams can tee off with pass rush, you know they got two Hall of Fame pass rushers, plus they got another kid who, in Leonard Floyd right now who's as good as any edge pass rusher in the NFL. So they got three guys that can absolutely wreck your quarterback. And you saw what happened in the Philadelphia game when Tristan Wurst went out, right? You saw what Ryan Kerrigan was doing to their backup right tackle, coming off of Tom's throwing arm side. He was killing him. He was throwing him on the ground every play. What do you think Von Miller's going to do to him? What do you think Aaron Donald's going to do to the interior of this offensive line if there's any kind of miscommunication because Ryan Jensen's not there or he's hobbled on that ankle? So, yeah, they have to make sure that this offensive line is shored up because even though they would like to run the football, this is a passing team. These guys play a passing type of game, and they're going up against one of the – well, they're going up against the number one team in the NFL as far as – pass rush win rate in the NFL in the Rams and Aaron Donald who's beat more double teams than any other two players combined in the NFL this year any other two players combined Aaron Donald has beaten more double teams pick any two rushers you want that's sick man that's ridiculous so yeah their offensive line Max they better be healthy Lou when you when you look back at the first meeting between the Bucks and the Rams. The Rams obviously took them to the woodshed without having mm-hmm. Von Miller and OBJ and Cam Akers. To have that same sort of repeat performance this time around in the playoffs with the added addition of these guys, what do the Rams have mm-hmm. to do? I think offensively, Key, I think they need to do what they've done ever since they took their beat down in San Francisco on Monday night that we had, which is... If they could run the football with Sony and Cam Akers the way they ran it just uh, two nights ago against the Cardinals, if they can get that kind of balance, get Matthew under center, and then have the passing game come off of that with play-action pass, then it could get to where they can do what they want to do because that is a very deadly combination. If it becomes a, just a straight drop-back game, I don't think that's their game anymore. And even though their offensive line is considered to be one of the better ones as far as pass protection when you use the data to kind of really um, – analyze it this is a team that really doesn't want to sit and drop back all the time they don't want Matthew like you know sitting back there all the time like that so when they stay balanced they look like they did the other night they look like they have over the past couple they look like they did when they played San Francisco just two weeks ago but they lost it late and I think for the defense again to really play to its strengths key they need to play with the lead because when this team knows they've got you in third and six seven eight plus and they've got a 14 point lead 10 point lead 17 point lead Look, Aaron and, and Vaughn and them are hell, man. That You can't deal with that then. Because now he's not, he's, they're not thinking about anything besides what kind of games do we want to run? What kind of moves do I want to throw on you this time? Do I want to bull rush you, speed rush you? How do I want to embarrass you this time? That's what those guys want to do. So, yeah, I think the offense needs to get off to a fast start, stay balanced. Defense needs to keep them in third and long. Because I'll tell you, if, if Tampa doesn't have their horses up front, this is going to be a wild one to watch. How can they slow them down enough to stay in this game? Yeah, it's going to be all about front and coverage, Key. All about front and coverage, meaning rush with four, which they can do in Tennessee. They can rush with four. They can get pressure on your passer with Autry and Harold Landry and Jeffrey Simmons. Those guys, those guys are a problem, and it's not like Tennessee – I mean, it's not like Cincinnati's offensive line has been world beaters this year. They've gotten their quarterback sacked more than any quarterback in the NFL. So those seven guys in the back end, what do you got to do? Well, you can't have it be seven on seven and have free releases all over the place and letting these guys run uncontested, whether it be outside the numbers, inside the numbers, whatever it is. You start with Jamar. You'd be foolish if you don't. You make sure number one isn't the number one receiver in this game. Because if he is, you're probably going to be in a dogfight and you may lose the football game. And I'll tell you what, Tennessee, as much as I love Mike Vrabel and as much as I love how he coordinates this defense in his own image – they don't have anybody that can deal with Jamar Chase. There aren't too many teams that do. Start with him. Get after Joe. Make sure you can get after him with four. And you'll probably be in this game right to the very end where maybe big boy number 22 can take over.
Lewis, the Chiefs stopped the Bills last year in the playoffs. The Bills were retooled to beat the Chiefs. They've exercised the Patriots demon. And now it's on to Arrowhead. And I, this is my yeah. favorite game in a great slate of games. Can Mahomes rise to the challenge? Is he and the Chiefs, are they going to have to be better than they've been in order to beat this Bills team? No, I think they need to do what they have done now, let's just say over the past four or five weeks, which is be content in playing the long game on offense. Don't try to get the, the big play over the top, the big shot play where Tyreek can do backflips in the end zone simply because you're getting impatient. Make sure Daryl Williams is able to run the football. Make sure Travis is utilized first and second level in the middle of the field. And Patrick, don't turn the ball over like he did in the first game against Buffalo, which is ultimately what cost him. If they do that on the offensive side, they'll move the football methodically. They'll get their points. Defensively, here's the key, though. Defensively, Josh Allen cannot do to them what he, had, what he did to them in the first game, which was that's when you first saw Buffalo start using him as a runner. And I think it caught Kansas City off guard. Every single game where Josh has said, you know what, I can beat you with my arm. We all know that. But I can also beat you with, on quarterback design runs. If he does that to them, then it's going to be a long game for them. But Kansas City's defense looks up to the challenge. They look like a team, especially at linebacker now, with Nick, with Nick Bolton and Willie Gay. They have a lot of speed, a lot of youth at that position where they can neutralize quarterbacks who can run the football. So you're right. This is maybe the best matchup of the weekend. Um, this will be a great this will be a great um, a great chance for Kansas City to go ahead and, and see if they can even the score on Buffalo this year. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.